Hi there, I'm Marty Owings and today I'm going to take a look at these King Art Studio watercolor brush markers. There they are and they look just like art candy. I bought the 36 marker set but these also come in a set of 12. I don't think you can buy these in open stock. They come in a nice clear plastic container with snap close latches which I'll show you here in a second. The markers themselves are secured within the case and snap in and out very easily so you can organize them in whatever way you want to. I picked up this 36 marker set for just under about $17, $18 US. So they're very affordable, but we'll still see how they stack up. I mean, opening these things up, they kind of have this trifold uh, container and when you open them up, it's like a it's like an amusement ride for the eyeballs. I just love all these colors. And it folds neatly away just like this. And the top closes over and then you can secure the latches. There's not a ton to find out about these markers, just some very light marketing material on their website. King Art uh, used to be Lowell Cornell and they were acquired by the Newell brand uh, who owns Prismacolor and some other companies like that. So it's kind of a big conglomerate with a lot of subsidiaries and there just isn't a lot of detail or information or transparency about where these are made or what the materials are or anything like that. But yet and still, they serve a definite purpose as a uh, student grade or artist, you know, practice grade, maybe for children or people in school, things like that. And you can certainly do storyboard layout or sketchbook work or thumbnails with these colors and, and you get a fantastic variety. So they fit a niche, that's for sure. And I like to see companies, more companies doing watercolor markers. They're cool to use. Now here I've added a little bit of water to the brush here. I'm using a flat and I noticed something as I was swatching these colors out. You can see some of the remnants of the watercolor there in uh, the watercolor marker as I swatch these out. But an interesting thing happens when the water has time to set up on the colors. They actually disperse very much different from when they're still uh, when, when you first start out. So when they're dry, from the time they're wet to the time they're dry, a great deal of dispersion happens, which was really impressive to me, and I enjoyed that. Now, I tried mixing some colors here. I didn't scrub hard enough on the yellow and blue, so I tried a little bit harder to mix the, the red and blue to get the purple color, and it worked quite well. Here's a, a comparison of the wet and dry uh, the differences. You can see here, when it is dry, it disperses quite well, which is was an awesome and pleasant surprise. Let's take a closer look at the marker itself. It's got a nice cap. They feel sturdy. Um, the tip feels nice and firm, uh, but bouncy enough to give a little when you're using it, which has a really nice feel to it. You can see I press on it a little bit here. Stiff enough but still has enough give there and it's a nylon tip and the cap makes a really nice sound when you put it on so you know it's on. Yep, Just like that. And notice this little tab here on the tip of the cap. That's so it doesn't roll off a tilted work surface. Some things this marker is missing is the color name. They should have printed the color name right on it and it has a hollowed out end so you get less ink overall but you know for the affordability here at, at less than 50 cents per marker and the colors you can the variety of colors you can generate here and you can even mix these which i found fascinating um it, they're not a bad deal uh, i did wish they printed the the name of the color on the marker itself for the small amount of money that costs it really goes a long way in uh, my book here I'm going to do a little bit of a comparison here, and it's it's really not fair because I'm comparing these to liquid watercolors uh, by P.H. Martin, the Hydrus and the Radiant watercolor line. You can see uh, these colors are very bright. They prob probably have a lot of uh, brightener added to them. They're very vibrant. And again, only one of the these, the Radiant or the Hydrus, is light fast 
can't remember for sure which one it is now, but only one of them is light fast, so, um, so you have to take that into account as well. Now, more of the unfair comparisons here, comparing sort of uh, the Windsor, Newton, Fa and Faber-Castell watercolor markers, which are actual pigment-based pigment markers, so they're not uh, ink-based uh, markers, so they're going to be tend to be more light fast, more durable, and obviously uh, of a much higher quality. Now, a little while back, back uh, I did review the Faber-Castell watercolor marker, which was introduced late last year. And you can see here a comparison between the Faber-Castell, Windsor & Newton, and the King Art watercolor brush markers here. Pretty nice. Here's the Faber-Castell. You see the colors are a little muted here. They're a little bit uh, kind of a pastel-y color, but I liked the uh, Windsor Newton. And like I said, these markers are gonna be pig pigment-based. So you could use them actually for finished work. And now the really unfair comparison. These are the greatest watercolor markers in the history of watercolor markers, in my opinion, and that's the Windsor & Newton watercolor marker. The colors are excellent. They're made in France. They're going to be light fast. They're going to be durable, and they just mix and disperse out, outstandingly. Uh, so here, for the King Art, though, I give them uh, very high marks for being, A, affordable, and these would be, like, great, like I said, for storyboard, or thumbnails or just in your sketchbook sketching and you got a great variety of colors here again though King Art please print the name of the color on the marker itself and here I'm going to attempt to use the markers to do a little bit of sketching so this is a character I saw at the uh, back to the 50s car show last year at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds near where I live and he just had an interesting, uh, really interesting look to him. He had kind of a cool mustache. He was wearing glasses, sitting back, uh, chilling in his chair next to his uh, car, which I believe was a 63 or 64 uh, Cadillac, which was really cool as well, in restored mint condition. So that was fun to look at. And like I said, he was just sitting back in his uh, folding chair, camp chair there, just taking it easy. Uh, doing some people watching himself, watching the other cars go by, and having a good time. Now here I'm using uh, some of the darker colors to just get more uh, definition in the shadows. Uh, I'll add a little brown here to warm up these shadows a little bit in the, in the sketch. What was cool about being out there that day, it was a warm day, I think it was in July or sometime around there. And, um, and everybody was just having a good time. It wasn't oppressively hot, but uh, lots of great cars to be seen. And just, like I said, people watching. And this guy was just uh, taking it all in. I noticed as I was sketching this guy some incongruities with his legs and his torso. His leg seems taller or shorter for his torso, but he was kind of set back slumped back in the chair. Now here I'm just going to add a light background. I don't want to overdo that. I just want to add a little bit of a light to that. Now to clean this drawing up a little bit, I'm going to darken some of the lines here. And I notice that his hat is casting a shadow on, the sh on his shoulder there. So I'm going to go ahead and add some color in there and then use the flat brush to sort of blend that in. And again, amazingly, as that color dries, it disperses really well. Now to clean it up even further and get to some detail, I'm gonna use this titanium white and black wash. I'm gonna wet my paper towel and then add the white and black wash to it. The wet paper towel will keep it moist. I'll use a number two round here to go in and add some of the details and correct some of my, my mistakes. His hat's a little funky on the right-hand side. I wanna trim some of that dark color out there and just give him a, uh, a little bit better look. Put the glasses on, adds a little bit of reflected light in those, and just clean up uh, some of the folds, get his hat right, 
and uh, just do a little bit of the detail work you sort of save for the end. I'll fix that collar in a minute because you can't have that bright white collar in, uh, in shade. So I'll clean that up here as we go along. Uh, that's basically the finished sketch in about 20 minutes. I thought he was a cool character to paint and sketch. So there he is. Car show guy. Car character guy. Pretty cool. Pretty cool to paint him with these markers. If you get a chance, pop over to my blog, my website here and scroll down on the page and on the right hand side there's a little blue follow button there please just click that button and join uh, me in the artistic journey i recently posted some stuff on the uh, blog about uh, james gurney and steve mitchell and i from the mind of watercolor interviewed him recently check that out if you get a chance thanks for stopping by so long everybody this has been marty for owingsart.com <music>